ideally, you stick in one program the entire time, but sometimes you just can't. Like to make that mesh structure and merge it into the surface, like I did earlier, would just be, it's just hard. It just takes forever. And maybe you don't have forever to do that. And so, but a lot of times, and I'm gonna kind of lean on Grasshopper here, but sometimes like in Grasshopper, there are plugins in, in Grasshopper like uh, the Weaverbird plugin, which basically gives you a lot of the sort of mesh manipulation and smoothing options that you would get out of ZBrush. And Weaverbird was written by, I think, the founder of Pixar. And so he was one of the, the first people who figured out how to like actually smooth objects and, and that whole area of sort of manipulating CAD data, not even CAD data, um, like mesh data. And so, but like these were all, these are tons of different ways of smoothing things on objects. And if I keep it all in, all in Rhino or even mostly in, in Grasshopper, like sometimes I'll, I'll do parts in Rhino, like I'll, I'll CAD model stuff I don't want to change and I'll just model it once and keep it there. But like maybe I'm, like I haven't determined what the, the hexagon structure or the, like the reinforcement structure on the outside of my pipe is. And so I'll keep that, I'll do that in Grasshopper and the last step is a smoothing process. So it's basically a parametric CAD file all the way up until I smooth it. And then when I smooth it, it's done. That's basically it. But because it's parametric all the way up until that point, if I want to make a modification, I just modify it and then it just updates all the way through even till the smoothing because it's all part of the same script. So like for instance, very quickly, if I just do an example right here, which will just be like, again, a, a very quick, uh, Solid cylinder, a really quick hexagonal structure on this thing. Surface, click that in there, and then lunch box structure, hexagonal structure, that's fine. And maybe I bump up the resolution of that to a higher number so I can see it. And so then I'm gonna basically pipe it or use a, the equivalent of a mesh pipe. It's a homogeneous piping structure. Way too big, five, three. So now we've got this nice structure and I can even preview it in white so it's easier to see. So we've got this nice structure, but because it's linked to that surface now, which is a CAD surface, I can just make it bigger and it just automatically updates. And so like maybe I'm like, you know, this side actually would be way better if it was way down here. And so it just, so it's sort of like halfway between mesh and, uh, and this is sort of where I think the sort of the, like all of the 3D modeling for 3D printing will be going is areas where like I can make like basically normal CAD manipulations like if I want the bottom of this circle to be, why can't I rotate? Let me double click out of here and back in. Like if I wanted the bottom of this to be a very particular diameter, like maybe I just select all of those and scale it to when I've got a very particular diameter and my mesh structure updates automatically onto that surface just instantaneously, which is super nice for like designing and like, like maybe I want a really crazy thing or that needs to be on the left. Like it just does it right away. Or even like, you know what? I don't like hexagons. I'm gonna put it with, uh, what is it called? Diamonds. And so I'm literally gonna like stick that in there, stick that in there, stick that in there, and now I have diamonds. And I'm just gonna hide the hexagons. That easy. Automatically done to a new shape and I can still keep, keep pushing and pulling on surfaces. Like that's gonna, let's just move that out there for some reason. But like automatically updating through it. So that's, that's one of my favorite ways to work is sort of kind of blend the benefits of mesh and the benefits of NURBS all together into one kind of, I don't want to say it's a package because I didn't make a package, but like kind of like a nice easy to use sort of system where like, oh, actually maybe that's better when it's really short. And then like, oh, and see, it's, I've still got this weird mesh, like NURB, not NURBS, uh, normals issue going on. And so if I use one of uh, we, like the Weaverbird commands, if I just stick that in there, Sometimes it blows up. In this case, it might have blown up a little bit, but sometimes it does a better job at smoothing than that. But that's the, the all the stuff, that's why like, like ZBrush is specifically built to do some of these things, so it'll do it better, at least right now, it does it way better than regular software. Or like stuff I can kind of like, this is like a, I don't wanna call it a hack, but like 
you can do it here, you can do it better in ZBrush. And so it just depends on where you want to spend your time. Like I've definitely been like, this looks good enough, but like, for instance, I've got a funny scene there or something like that. But like, this looks good enough. Now that I'm really 100% certain that this is probably my last object that I'm going to make, maybe I take it into ZBrush and do the, what I really want for smoothing there, or maybe I don't and I, this is fine. The issue with going into like, once you make it an STL or an OBJ, that's basically the end of the parametric part of the workflow. And so if you want to start back, it's nice having this model here that I can always go back in, like even maybe I don't want a surface, maybe I want, or here, let's box. If I just explode this box and then I'm like, oh, I want a crazy structure or like a, a diamond structure all over all the sides of this box, I'm going to click on all four of these surfaces, set multiple surfaces. Tidia, I've got a hexagonal structure all over the whole thing and because it's parametrically linked, I can be like, actually no, I think 15 looks better or works better for whatever reason and it updates all throughout the entire object. And then if I'm like, you know, actually this would look way better if this, not look, I'm saying look, but like this would work way better if this thing was way over there. It'll automatically deform that mesh right to it instantly. And so, or I mean instantly based on the processing of your, the processing speed of your computer. But that's how we do a lot of sort of fine tuning of, of that design workflow. But I do jump, there's definitely, I run into issues here where like maybe I, c I can make it look fine, but it's not a printable model, like it's an open mesh or it's an open poly surface or there's bad edges or there's bad something, so that's when I'll go into magics and maybe fix something or like maybe a boolean command won't work anymore, like I've just totally screwed something up or the software, like there's just something crazy going on in there that I can't see, but like, like I'll definitely bring it into magics, fix it, bring it back, do that boolean and then maybe that was the last thing I do or like if I realize that there's a, uh, an issue going on, Maybe I'll just keep working on it, understanding that there's an issue and be like, I'll fix that at the end. Like I'll just wait until the last possible moment to do those bullying. So like I said, if I do them first and continue working on it, then maybe like eight hours later, I'm like, oh, what if I wanted to, and then I've got to redo that eight hours worth of work every single time I want to make an update. So there's definitely like a, a give and take to, to working with, with these mesh modeling programs. like FEA analysis. So my favorite one is solid thinking, not solid thinking, is uh, this, uh, what's this software called? Yeah, solid thinking, sorry, got it confused. I would still use Inspire just because I'm more comfortable with Inspire. I used to do a little bit, I think it was SolidWorks. SolidWorks has a little, no, SolidWorks has uh, computational fluid dynamics in it, right? That was the, I was using SolidWorks to analyze the, uh, basically the shock wave of a, try, ma basically making, trying to make a, a suppressor for a, a 50 cal rifle. And we were using that to basically analyze the flow through the, the uh, suppressor. But it was, I mean, it's your choice at that point. There's not a, it's whatever is your particular like, like preference in softwares. If you're working in SolidWorks, it makes sense to stay in SolidWorks at that time. If you're not, we're like, Rhino actually just got a plugin earlier this week that I had never seen before that'll do really nice, F or supposedly do really nice FEA analysis of, stru of structures, but I have not, it literally just came out earlier this week to my knowledge, and so I haven't been able to play with it. But uh, it's whatever is the best specific kind of thing for your application. I don't know, I'm sure there are very specific, like when you get into aerospace, I'm sure there's like a specific aerospace something or other that does that really well, like Katia. I know Katia doesn't do that, to my knowledge, but something like that maybe.